Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. We thank you for the grace of God upon our lives. I want to appreciate God for His mercy towards us and members of our family. And I want to thank God for bringing us to the first Saturday of the year, 2024. It's a prayer that many, many days God will bring our ways in Jesus' name. And today is Saturday, January 6th, the Epiphany Day, the day Jesus Christ manifested himself. And I pray that the Lord, whom has been there for us, will see us through in Jesus' name. I want to invite members of your family to be part of this morning devotion. And we pray that the Lord will minister life unto us all. Shall we pray? Eternal Father, once again, we honor you. We give you thanks, we give you praise. You have gathered us together this morning by your divine providence. Thank you, Lord, since the beginning of this year. Thank you, Lord, for your grace upon us. It is by your mercy that we are not consumed. We gather together this morning to listen to your word and to commit our ways into your hands as we go about our work this day. We pray, mighty God, that you go ahead of us. Pray that you bless us. Pray that you prosper us. Pray that we bless the works of our hands. That every day of our life shall be full of testimonies. And at the end, may we live to praise your name. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Today, by the grace of God, our text is taken from Psalm 72. We read from verse 1 to 14. Psalm 72, we read from verse 1 to verse 14. And our topic is two needs of a leader. Two needs of a leader. Psalm 72, 1 to 14. I read, Give the king your judgment, O God. And your righteousness to the king's son. He will judge your people with righteousness. And your poor with justice. The mountains will bring peace to the people. And the little ease by righteousness. He will bring justice to the poor of the people. He will save the children of the needy. And will break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear you. As long as the sun and moon endure, throughout all generations, it shall come down like rain upon the grass before mowing, like showers that water the earth. In his days, the righteous shall flourish, and the abundance of peace until the moon is no more. It shall have dominion over also from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. Those who dwell in the wilderness will bow before him, and his enemies will lick the dust. The kings of Tashish and of the eyes will bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba will offer gifts. Yes, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. For he will deliver the needy when he cries. The poor also and him who has no helper. He will spare the poor and needy. And will save the souls of the needy. He will redeem their life from oppression. And violence and precious shall be their blood in his sight. This is the word of God. We thank God for... Today's topic, as we are still in the first week of the year, reminding us about things that are so germane in the lives of our leaders. And I want to start by letting us know that every one of us is a leader in our own right. Every one of, of us in the house, as the father of the house, you are a leader. As a wife in the family, as a mother, you are a leader. First son is a leader. Even all, every other, all the children, they are leaders in their own right. Some are class captain. Some are janitor in schools. Some are, we discover that even every child of God is a leader. God has called us for a purpose. And the purpose is to lead men and women to his presence. And one thing that, must, that, that, must, that we must take note 
from our topic. He says, two needs of a leader. Several of us, we are after our wants, not our needs. Some of us, we are so consumed about what we need temporarily for our satisfaction. What I need to please me, to quench my thirst now. That is what some of us are after. And that may be our wants. But we are particularly about our needs this morning. And as we begin this year, if you can pay close attention to the needs of individual leader, the need of every leader in homes, the need of every leader in the church, the need of every leader in the community, in the society, even in our nation, we know that things will be better for us this year. And as we pay close attention to what God expects from us, the mandate of God upon every leader, the desire of God upon every who to be leader, and if you can do it and follow suit, things will be better for you and me. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Now, from our text, we discover that two things are important for leaders at all levels. I want us to know by the time we are talking about leaders, we are not talking about political leaders. We are not talking about the president or state governors. We are also not talking about the bishops or the primates. We are talking about you. You are a leader. We are talking about you in your own in your own terms. And one thing that every leader must uphold, number one, justice and righteousness. Every leader must uphold and embrace justice and righteousness. And that is the hallmark of a true leader. Now, from our passage, this psalm was one of the psalms of Solomon. Of course, you know who Solomon was. Solomon was a leader who asked for wisdom from God. Solomon was a leader who did not allow his background to deter him from achieving greatness for God. Solomon understood when he emerged as a leader. He understood the expectation of God upon his life. He understood that he could not do it by his own power. He could not lead his people in his own terms. And he sought the face of God. He sought the face of God in order to do what to do, in order to know what to do per time. And God revealed himself to Solomon. And because of that, Solomon became the wisest king in Israel and even in our time because of his trust and his faith in God. Now, Solomon's prayer today is quite instructive. From where we read, verse 1 says, Give the king your judgments, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son. So Solomon knew that what king need to execute judgment is justice. What every, every leader needs to carry out his own assignment is justice and righteousness. And of course, a leader must embrace justice be it in the family be it in the church be it in the society be it in the political arena every leader is duty bound to embrace justice otherwise such a leader is visionless for a leader to be successful for a leader to prevail for a leader to succeed Justice and fair play must be his watchword. For a leader to triumph in every aspect, in all dimensions, justice must prevail. You know, one thing that some of us forget several times is that we think we can manipulate our ways. And today we have leaders who manipulated their ways into the position of leadership. Maybe even in the home, in the church, or in the society, a leader that manipulates his way to the position of authority. <laughs> of course, I don't know, I'm not God, but such a leader may not really deliver judgment to his people. Why? Because if the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? And that is one thing that God expects 
in the life of every leader. Justice must prevail. And I want to challenge us today. Even are you aspiring to get to a position of authority, it is good to fail and fail honorably than to succeed in a woeful manner. Than to succeed or get to the position of authority in a manipulative way. That is the desires of God. The heartbeat of God. The mindset of God. The mandate of God. Because justice must prevail. And I pray that the Lord will give us such grace in the name of Jesus. So, King Solomon started by saying, give the king your justice, O God. As king, he was desperate in asking God to give his love of justice to him. That, Lord, let justice rule my heart. Give me love for justice. That was the prayer of Solomon. Solomon was so humble enough to seek the face of God for justice. And I would like us to learn from the life of Solomon, who humbled himself and asked God, Lord, during my time, I want justice to prevail. I don't know whether you are listening to me today. You are the head of your family. You are the husband in that home. You are the wife. Are you like Solomon who craved for justice? In your relationship with your family, with your wife, with your children, do you pray for justice? Do you see God's face for justice? Are you a leader in the church? Do you pray for justice? Can you humble yourself enough to ask for wisdom in order to execute judgment in the right way? Are you a leader in society? And you want to be like Solomon. I want to encourage you today. Solomon humbled himself and sought the face of God for justice. Say, let the spirit in love of justice rule my heart. And God answered his prayer. Every Christian leader must love justice. If you be effective and godly, you must love justice. Fair play. Everybody is a leveler. God is not interested in your tribe. It's not about your tribe. It's not about who you are. It's about carrying the mandate of God in that position. It is not about your age. It's not about your status. It is not about your attainment or your achievement. What God is looking for in the life of every Christian leader is display of justice and godly lifestyle. God will make us so in Jesus' name. I pray the Lord will make us such leaders in Jesus' name. Therefore, one wonders how many Christians are in politics today. We wonder, we begin to wonder because of what is happening. The attitudes of our Christian in politics put up and you begin to ask yourself, what type of thing is this? Are these people representing God? Or they are carrying out their own mandate. I want you to know today that every leader is ordained by God to carry out God's mandate. The mandate of God upon you is to carry out justice in the land. Justice must prevail. Justice must be the order of the day. And therefore, understand and some are just doing what they like. Some are carrying out their own self will Mandate. Some are doing what they like, not what God likes. I don't know, as a leader, what you are doing today. Is it in line with God's principle? Are you carrying out God's mandate? Or you are, own, you are carrying out your own agenda? Are you doing the will of God? Or you are doing the will of your family? Are you carrying out the mandate of heaven? Are you executing justice? Or you are lording it over the people. It does not matter. This is your time. And I will show them. They will know that somebody is there now. Is that the will of God for you? Many people are, people, poor people are crying. And you are enjoying. You say, yes, they will know. They will fear me. Are you carrying out God's mandate? Or you are inflicting hardship on people? What is the what is divine agenda of God upon you in that position? Therefore, a casual look at the practice of democracy in Nigeria since 1999 will reveal an array of very selfish politicians 
who have led or are leading without recourse to genuine justice. Well, I'm not in the position to judge, but I want us to know that anyone who fails to rule in the fear of God will be judged by God himself. And that is the final. If you fail to carry out God's mandate, God's judgment, judgment of God will come. But I want to encourage our Christian leaders, do not forget God. You are there to carry out God's agenda in a time like this. God expects you to be his voice. God expects you to be the voice of the voiceless. God expects you to elevate people's hardship. But several of us, first several of our Christian politicians, what they do, they go there for their own selfish interest. This is a new year. Have everything. God is depending on you in that office. God is looking at you in that office. God wants you to do his biddings and not the bidding of yourself. God expects you to carry out his own agenda. God expects you to deliver the oppressed by your action, by what you do, and not to cause sudden death for poor people. God will use you. And I pray that the Lord will minister to you today to transform lives and to be a good and responsible godly leader, leaders in Jesus' name. Now, some of them are professing Christians. And this is what is so sad. If you are a child of God, be a child of God. The Bible says, Arise and shine for your light has come. And God has also said to every Christian that you are a light of the world. You are a light of the world. You are there to, show, to shine light of God. If others are corrupt, you must stand out and be different. The expectation of God over every child of God is to be different. Be different from them. If everybody is embezzling money, leave them to their own peril. But you must be different because you are named with Christ. Something different must take place in your life. Dare to be different. Dare to stand out. Dare to be different. And I want to encourage you in the year 2024. Please be different for God. And God will honor you. Be different for God. And God will lift you up. Be different. Do not join multitude to do evil. Do not partake in the corruption of the land. If others are going the way of destruction, retrace your step back to God. God knows what to do in your life. There's a way that seems right to a man. The Bible says the end of that way is destruction. Have you asked yourself what you are doing? Whether it will lead you to God's presence or it will lead you to air. At the end of your office, what do you want to get from God? Forget about what people are saying about you. People may be commending you that you are the best. They may be describing you in the superlative that you are the best. We have never seen it like this before. You are the best. Why? Because you have given that title cover to share. I want you to know that a day of reckoning is coming. What do you want to get on that day? Do you want to get commendation from God? Or do you want to get condemnation from God? I pray on that day, the voice of condemnation will not come to you. And if you don't want to be condemned, you need to sit up and represent God. In that office and the lord will give you such grace in jesus name now the second need of a leader is righteousness don't forget verse 2 says he will judge your people with righteousness and your people and your poor with justice god expects every christian leader to be righteous the bible says god loves righteousness and is iniquity god expects you to be righteous and the Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. This means being in right standing with God. Every leader must be in right standing with God. Every leader must, must hear from God, must have a nick with God for direction. God is the supreme leader, and every leader must have a nick with this supreme God. In order to get insight, in order to get direction from God to lead his people. If you do not have a nick with God, you are just there for nothing. Nothing guides you. Nothing directs you. Nothing motivates you. Nothing moves you. You can only lead God's people aright if you get direction from God. You, you find it difficult to lead God's people aright if you are not nicked with God. 
who is the author of every good thing. Therefore, you must have a right standing with God. You must have a right standing with God. And I would like us to know today that everyone called into a leadership position must possess their real attitude from God. Must have good relationship with God. They must possess the attributes of righteousness and justice. And the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. Therefore, the second thing is righteousness. Solomon also asked for these. Righteousness has to do with being in a right standing with God. As a result of being upright and decent in living and any affairs. Are you upright in any what is handed over to you? You are a leader in your own right. You are a leader in the family. Are you leading your family aright? What is handed over to you? How do you manage it? Do you manage it well? God has handed over your wife and your children to you. How do you manage them? Do you manage them in such a way that the name of the Lord will be glorified? How do you handle your wife? Do you handle your wife in such a way that the name of the Lord will be glorified? Or you treat your wife like a trash? How do you handle your children? Do you see them as God's children? As a father, as a parent, you are a caretaker. God expects you to hand those children as committed to your care in such a way that God's name will be happy. As a pastor in the church, the flocks of God, how do you undo them? Are you the type that calls them instead of you praying for them? How do you undo God's people handed over to you? Are you a leader in society? Are you a leader in the community? Are you a local government chairman? How do you undo the people God has gathered under you? Are you a leader in a state? Are you a leader of a nation? How do you undo the people God has put under you? The resources you are asked to manage, how do you manage these resources? The money that is put under you, how do you manage the money? Is it, are, you, are you the only one packing the money for your own use and leave others to their, to their destruction? How do you manage God's resources? How do you manage God's people? I want you to know that people that God gathered under you, they are God's people. And God hears the cry of the poor. God hears the cry of the poor. If you are not righteous, if you do not display justice, it is your own peril. Whether you like it or not, judgment of God will come. It may tarry, but surely it will come. If you don't want to end your life, your career in destruction, be a righteous leader. Be a righteous leader. Display holiness, display righteousness, and be truthful in your relationship with God. I pray for you that the Lord will give you a heart of difference. That 2024 as a leader, you be a leader with a difference. May God make you a leader with a difference. That this year, the mark of God will rest upon you. That all your activities, the fear of God will rule your heart. The fear of God will rule your heart. The grace to do the right thing at the right time. May God grant unto you this year. That as a leader, you will not fear God. If you are connected with God, People under you will benefit. They will, they, you will rule with justice. If you are connected with God, if you get your insight, your inspiration from God, people under you will enjoy. Him. And that is what the Bible says will not come to pass. That when the righteous are on the throne, people rejoice. But when the wicked are on the throne, people mourn. Do you want to be a righteous leader? Or you want to be a wicked leader? What do you want people under you to do? How do you want them to feel? Do you want them to groan under your leadership? Or you want them to rejoice under your leadership? I pray God will give you grace so that people God has put under you will rejoice while they are under your leadership. And the only way out is for you to have a nick with God who gives you direction, who will give you insight, who will tell you what to do part time in order to lead the people of God in the right direction. May that grace fall upon you. May the grace to humble yourself under God. The grace to live your life according to the dictate of God. May God grant unto you. And you will be a leader with a difference. And the mark of honor, mark of grace shall rest upon you. And I pray for all leaders. May the mercy of the Lord speak for you. May God give you grace to lead the people you are leading in the right direction. 
the grace to lead them in the right direction. God will grant unto you. May God make you a leader with a difference. May God make you a leader that fears God. May God make you a leader that has his own link, his own root with God. And day by day, people shall rejoice under you. Thank you, blessed Father. Lord, set us out with your power. Grant unto us breakthrough throughout this day and this year. That in all things, your name shall be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And we also pray for leaders at the different levels, be it in homes, in the church, in the political arena, in the society, in our nations. Father, help our leaders. Help them, O oh God, to do the right thing at the right time in the right places. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We thank you for being part of today's devotional. Pray that the Lord will continue to minister unto you. I want to invite you to join us tomorrow morning, the same time, same station. God bless you and do have a nice day. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of the Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.